Hello and welcome. In our video today we're going to look at animal cells and plant cells. In fact we're going to look at something else called prokaryotes as well. Often that name is used interchangeably with the word bacteria. Animal and plant cells we can also refer to those as eukaryotes and a simple way to know the difference is that eukaryotes have a nucleus and prokaryotes or bacteria don't. So let's pluck out a cell from our person on the left there we can take a cell from the plant as well. Remember, cells are the basic unit of all living things. And there are our cells, and what we're gonna do is label the different parts. Now, you've probably done this a few times before, but it's important that you know what all the different parts are and the function of those parts. So here is our animal cell on the left, and this is our typical plant cell on the right. The first labels are fairly straightforward and these are found, these are five parts found in both plant and animal cells. So the first one is the nucleus. Next one down you can see there is the cytoplasm and the next one down just inside the plant cell there and on the outside of the animal cell is the cell membrane. And then we look at these parts that I've tried to show as magnified and these are the mitochondria mitochondria for plural, singular, or one is called a mitochondrion, and the small dots there are called ribosomes. Okay, now if you were to look at a mitochondrion, we could just enlarge that a little bit. Oops, you can enlarge that a little bit just to see what it looks like. That's a fairly typical shape for a mitochondrion. And the important thing about the mitochondria and the ribosomes is that they are very, very tiny. You wouldn't be able to see those using a microscope that you have in school. So they're very, very tiny. You'd actually need a special type of microscope called an electron microscope. And this has a higher magnification, which allows us to see those smaller objects inside the cell. The others you can see through a light microscope. Okay, so that's dealing with what we find in both, but we also need to look at what we find in plant cells only. So we can put our title at the top there, plant cells. So these are found in plants only, and these you're probably familiar with. We have at the top there a sap vacuole. Then we have something called a chloroplast. Green object there is a chloroplast. And then we have on the outside of the cell a cell wall. Don't mix that up with the cell membrane, which is something slightly different. Okay, so those are the parts that you need to know. Eight parts you should be very familiar with. And the next thing we need to be able to do is to label the function of those parts. So let's just make a little bit of space and start with the nucleus. The nucleus has the job of controlling what goes on, let's just color that in, the nucleus has the job of controlling what goes on inside the cell and it does that through something it has inside called DNA. So it controls the cell activities and it does that because it contains something called DNA and the DNA has genes and those carry out the function of controlling what the cell does. Next is the cytoplasm, and this is where most of the chemical reactions happen in the cell. So it's a watery solution, and most of the chemical reactions that the cell needs to carry out happen in the cytoplasm. Then we've got the cell membrane, that's a, got a very important job. It controls what goes in and out, usually based on the size of molecules, but based on other things as well, but the overall function is it controls what goes in and out of the cell. The mitochondria, very important again, they have the job of releasing energy through this process called respiration. In fact, it's aerobic respiration, but they release energy through respiration. And ribosomes have the job of making proteins. Another way of saying that is to say protein synthesis, which just means to make proteins. Then we have the sap vacuole, that contains something called sap, which is just basically a sugary solution. And we have the chloroplast, and chloroplast contains something called chlorophyll, which absorbs light energy for photosynthesis. I always remember that chlorophyll fills the chloroplast to get those the right way around. Okay, but its job is to absorb light so the plant can carry out photosynthesis. Then we have the cell wall, and that gives rigidity and strength to the cell and it's made of a special substance called cellulose and that's what gives it its strength cellulose very important keyword okay so these unfortunately you have to know and remember 
uh, good news is you probably know a lot of those already but it is memory work but there's no excuse not to know those okay so what we're going to look at next is the prokaryotes and with the prokaryotes we often refer to those as bacteria but I've put in some measurements there we've got one micrometer 10 and 50 micrometers that symbol there means micrometers and one micrometer is the same as one millionth of a meter or you could say 10 to the minus 6 but that's the kind of size we're talking about now if we were to uh, look at what the prokaryotes let me just put a note there sorry prokaryotes are bacteria if we were to look at the sizes of these in the correct scale we'd have to draw them nearer to this size here so this the animal cell is about one-fifth of the plant cell and the bacterial cell is about one-tenth of the animal cell so if we drew them to scale that's the kind of right scale of the typical size of these different types of cell but obviously if we did that we won't be able to label them very easily so we need to be able to label a prokaryote as well so we can go through this very quick because there are not any new words was one new word which we'll look at but most of them are familiar so we've got the cell wall the cell membrane we've got DNA which we describe as circular so one end joins to the other and we also have another piece of DNA it's called a plasmid that's also circular and that's extra or separate from the main circular DNA and it contains a few genes we then have the ribosomes those small dots there you can see and then the cytoplasm as in the other two cells which we looked at we also have something here which is called a flagellum it's like a tail and it helps with movement okay so that's our prokaryotic cell and you should be able to label those different parts okay so it's probably worth giving yourself a little test on the functions of the different parts so you can pause here and do that but if not let's go through them the nucleus controls the activities as we said remember it contains DNA which has genes the cytoplasm and cell membrane you can just read off there the mitochondria that's where aerobic respiration takes place that's respiration with the use of oxygen and that will release energy that process will release energy ribosomes is where protein synthesis happens and it's probably worth mentioning that proteins are made of something called amino acids we'll look at that in more detail later and the next three parts all to do with plants in fact let's just add a note here the chemical that the chloroplast contains is called chlorophyll and the sap vacuole is filled with cell sap so the last three at the bottom there remember these are plant cells only and these two were different in that they were very very small compared to the other parts the other subcellular structures here is another way we can test ourselves what you might want to do is put ticks in the column and crosses to show whether the part is present in our plant animal and bacteria remember the bacteria we were also calling the prokaryotes oops didn't mean to do that so for the plant we have a nucleus a cell membrane a cell wall we have chloroplasts and in actual fact we have all the eight parts that are listed there what about our animal cell we have a cell membrane we do not have a cell wall or chloroplasts nor do we have a sap vacuole but we have the other three parts the ribosomes mitochondria and cytoplasm what about bacteria or prokaryotes just want to make sure you know we're talking about prokaryotes when we talk about bacteria but they have a cell membrane they have a cell wall just like plants they do not have chloroplasts nor a set vacuole but they do have ribosomes they don't have mitochondria but they do have cytoplasm in fact there was one other part here which we mentioned which is not on our list and that's something called the plasmid and we found that not in plant or animal cells but we found it in the bacteria it's probably worth mentioning also that while we say that plant cells have chloroplasts it's not every single type of plant cell for example the roots don't have chloroplasts because they live under the soil and they don't carry out photosynthesis okay so quite a lot of memory work there but it's very important that you do know and remember the names and the functions of, diff of the different parts of animal plant and prokaryotes thank you for watching and i'll see you very soon